Hi everyone, we're back and the topic for discussion today for the new nurse is brain and spinal tumors. Some people may have worked in uh, neurological units but some may have not. So I'd just like to share my personal experience as well as other information which might be able to be very helpful. Here we have a Mr. N who is complaining of headaches which he's never had before. His family sought medical intervention, CT scan revealed a frontal lobe meningioma. Meningioma is a tumors that um, occur in the meningeal coverings of the brain, which are starting from inside out, the pia meta, the arachnoid, and the dura. Those are protective coverings. And usually the symptoms of brain tumors depend on where they occur within the brain. Some people, the frontal area, you get judgment problems and just at behavioral changes. Now, let us talk about after a patient has surgery. Once a patient has had brain surgery and is successful, the battle is not completely over. I remember my first experience working in a brain unit many years ago when a patient came out of surgery and one of her friends suggested she was going to sit next to her all night because they were close friends and watch, watch her. And the lady was so agitated, she started vomiting and had severe headaches and along came a nurse who had far more experience than I did and she shared with me that rest was best. She said that patients who have brain surgery, the overstimulation was not very good for their brains. So they medicated them for pain, nausea, whatever the circumstance was and let them rest. So it was about eight o'clock that night. We put that patient down to sleep after being medicated because the nurse had a talk with her friend and she just slept like a baby all night. The next morning she woke up and she felt really wonderful. And that was my first experience learning that patients who have brain surgery, the rest was best. So let's talk about some of the deficits. Depending on which area of the brain is involved, that's where you're likely to get your deficits. Let's take the frontal lobe, for example. It is said of these patients that they have problems with their judgment call and motor activity. In fact, some of them who are diagnosed with tumors will tell you that they notice behavioral changes and that was what prompted them to go and seek advice and let's take the occipital lobe. here's a patient who's saying that he never saw that car well his uh, problem was obviously in the occipital lobe which is directly responsible for vision and so we're going to talk a little bit more about treatment as far as treatment is concerned i've seen countless number of patients have brain surgery and have um, you know, tumors all over the brain and have surgery for them. I cannot really tell you exactly what happens to all of them. Surgery goes well. Some of them never have recurrences and some of them do. Some of them fare very well and others don't. Some others have chemotherapy and I don't really know what the statistics are. But anyway, the gamma knife is another form of treatment that's used. And as it is described, it's like the stereotactic machine where the patient goes into a sort of machine um, similar to that of a CAT scan and they have these beams of radiation. I believe it's about 201 that's targeted directly at the tumor. And for the most part, it is described that one treatment is supposed to be fairly successful. If you'd like to learn more about brain and tumors, brain and spinal tumors, take the trouble to go to dearnurses.org. I've just packed the whole page with lots of helpful information. I'm going to move into an area now, uh, spinal tumors, and I really don't know how many people have been exposed to patients with spinal tumors. One thing is clear, depending on the area of the spine or how deep the tumor is and how big it is, that's how you're going to get your neurological deficits. These tumors are described as being intrinsic and extrinsic. Those that are intrinsic are directly onto the uh, spinal cord, the, actually the, mater the, acute, the material of which it is made. And then those that are extrinsic are more or less, they originate in the, uh, do not originate in the cord but in the canal. And naturally they would occupy space. Anyhow, um, here's the case of Anne who is learning to walk again after a spinal tumor. Symptoms would include unsteady gait, weakness or upper of lower extremities, possible paralysis, and they might as well also have numbness and tingling. And I'll describe to you a couple of uh, types of tumors you would get, like the schwannoma, which is um, 
made of strong cells or special cells that cover the nerve fibers in the peripheral nerve system. And that particular type of tumor is known as one of the extrinsic ones. And neurofibromas are considered to be benign. Most spinal tumors are considered to be benign. Anyhow, um, neurofibromas may just develop on any nerve, but when they're in that area, naturally they might cause things like numbness and tingling. Uh, diagnosis is usually made by CT scan, biopsy, and um, sometimes